Welcome back to our channel guys. This is Sri Lanka. Today I'm back with another very interesting interview for you with a gentleman who has started from very humble beginnings but has risen up to be one of the most prominent people in the travel industry of Sri Lanka. Today we are going to be talking to Mr. Chandra Vikramasinghe who is the chairman and founder of Connaissance Pistilan as well as Sema Collection which is a chain of really amazing hotels. We are actually here at one of these hotels right now, Alia Resort, and we will be interviewing him and I'm very excited to share this interview with you. So, let's so today we have Chandra Vikramasinghe with us. Chandra, thank you so much for joining us. We have a quick few questions for you okay. and I'm excited to hear your answers. All right. So the first one is actually, how did you start? Because we see who you are today and what you have accomplished in all the wonderful hotels and uh, other adventures that you do. But what is the foundation of Chandra Vikramasinghe? Well, at the beginning, I didn't have a foundation. <laughs> I just built it. No, actually, I was uh, 1970s. You know, when you come out from the schools, you yeah. don't have jobs. Yeah. Basically, 71. So I, then I did a diploma in tour. I was a dropout. I yeah. couldn't get into university. So I did a first diploma in tourism course. Uh -huh. Then I, I studied French, Japanese, and foreign languages, nice. as well as tourism planning, especially resort planning, mm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then I went to Alliance Francaise, finished my diploma. Right. Then I went to hotel school, mm -hmm. Colombo, did a front office management course. Okay. Then I had to go to France and I became a tour guide for okay. about two and a half, three years. Right. It was the best part of my life. Yeah. I met my wife <laughs> <laughs> also and uh, that's the start. Right. Then I created a company Knowing Connaissance de Sela, yes. 1982. Right. And uh, then 83 was disaster. Yeah. We thought of closing down, but no, I said, no, we'll go to, I went to agency by agency in France, especially. Yeah. Because it's, uh, at that time, it was, we were the only people who, owners who spoke French at right. the time. Yeah. So it was very easy for me to get into the market. Right. From there, you know, then we built a hotel after 10 years. Yeah. Kandalama, then Candy. Yeah. The uh, just a new beginning after the war is over. Yeah. Then I went to Maruma, uh, Ma Pashikoda. Yeah. So that was my then the dream started again. Yeah. So from there to now, I have we have about eleven resorts. Right. And we have a very strong uh, DMC. Right. And event management company. So fully involved in tourism. Yeah. Nothing else. I feel like when you say it like that, you are uh, like. Me summarizing a very long journey. Long journey, yeah. And I'm sure there were so many more uh, like difficult, oh, and, like, my gosh. hard journey. But I, one thing I noticed is that from the beginning that you have been very focused on this tourism side, you started learning the languages, which yeah. is very important. Yeah. Um, so you had a vision to kind of be in tourism or you just fell into it and uh, followed the path? You no, know, I fell into it, but I loved it. I thought yeah. I have a path. Yeah. Because at that time, uh, tourism was done by big conglomerates. Yeah. Nobody has I, people from the industry touch yeah. the dust. Like a personal touch. Personal touch. touches. So because of that, uh, for me, I may have guided many, many French tourists. So I learned a lot from them. Yeah. What are their inspirations? Right. When they come to a country, what they want to see. Right. What they want to, uh, you know, experience. Right. So experiential travel, we started long, long, long years back. Yeah. Now, Everybody is looking for it. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's very easy when when you have different themes. That's why we change rebranding theme to Thema Collection. Yeah. So we have 11, 11 properties. The all are in different theme. The Malu is a fish, uh, elephant, this, then mm -hmm. Kitala, mm -hmm. bird life in Sri Lanka, then wild glamping, Galnoya. Everywhere, people will learn something. Very educative base. Tourism, we do it in a very uh, emotional way sometimes. Yeah. So we, even our staff, we have to train them yeah. to this type of thing because in a hotel school or any tourism schools, they won't, uh, they won't teach them yeah. how to keep the identity, mm. cultural environment, yeah. and social. It's just the basics. It's, it's, so, yeah, yeah, and this is, so that's not very even the table, uh, table manners, even table colors, table all those things. Those are big subjects. Okay, yeah. and that is not taught in a hotel school that much to that no, no, no. Color combinations right. and things like that. Right. Sometimes you are born with, yeah. sometimes you have to learn. Yeah. Yeah. I get that, yeah. 
Definitely, I think learning languages when you are a country that's yeah. so involved in tourism for the youth, learning languages presents opportunities. Oh my no? gosh! I always say that first learn good English. Yes. We came to Colombo without even talking English. Yes. And uh, and other languages. Yes. Yeah. Even now, somebody is going to uh, speak very good Chinese. Yeah. And the Chinese, they are open the floodgates. Yeah. People who are speaking Chinese in the world, yeah. uh, all over the world, you will get a lot of opportunities. Yeah. If you are enjoying this interview on our new channel, this is Sri Lanka, please do hit that subscribe button to support us and to encourage us to keep creating more. Yeah. How do you tackle tough times? Because you started your business, you just said one year before the riots yeah. in 83, which yeah. is a very difficult time yeah. in Sri Lanka. And then you continue to grow throughout the, the rest of the period. Yeah. And uh, now you are here. Yeah. So. There have obviously been the past four years have also been very difficult. So I want to know how do you how going through that journey of ups and downs and difficult times, yeah. how has that changed the way you perceive difficult times and how you tackle difficult times? Uh, well, we plan financial plans and we don't overspend okay. even on hotels. Yeah. And we are very careful about our budgeting. Even during good times. Even during good times. So yeah. we always keep up keep a buffer yeah. for us to go for another two, three years. And also, we are very innovative. Yeah. So, if you see, like, every time when we had a problem in the country, yeah. uh, you know, 89, JVP time, yeah. after 89, I built the first hotel, biggest hotel right. in, in uh, the Ambul area, right. Kandalama. During a time when people will think, no, think, no time, it's not time to And uh, even after war was over, when we went to Mal build Malu Malu, a lot of people look at us, oh, this guy is going to dump a lot of money and uh, regret later on. No, yeah. that is the opportunity. You go first yeah. and you win it. Yeah. It's a race. Yeah. It's a battle of ideas and innovations, yeah. especially in tourism. Yeah. I consider this as a, a combination of science and art yeah. with a lot of emotional intelligence. Mm. You know, you need artificial intelligence yeah. to maybe market something like that. But it, you, have, you know, it, it, for me, it's an emotion. Yeah. Every project is a different emotion, yeah. different. Uh, it's like uh, writing a different novel. Yeah. Right? I, I agree with you. And I definitely agree with what you said, where it's an opportunity yeah. that even in the darkest and toughest of times, yeah. there is opportunity. Yeah. I mean, during the COVID, we built Galnoya yeah. during the 100% COVID. I went there and there no telephone, nothing. Yeah. So it's a big uh, cultural change. And, and also, you have to work with. Uh, Adivasi yeah. were the people, so they were not very receptive at the beginning to work, you know, full time in hotel. They are not used it, so we had to do a lot of, uh, we had to integrate into that society and go and live, sort of with them, have a cup of plain tea with them. Yeah. So then they know, ah, oh, no, this one, this guy's not uh, alien from had come from Colombo too, you know. He's also human. <laughs> yeah. right. So that is very important to yeah. show them the host that we are humans. Mm. We are they are to not to take everything out from there, yeah. but we want to give it to the yeah. society. Yeah, the mutually beneficial. Yeah, the, that's a very, very good way to tackle it. Like even Aragalia time or whatever the times you have. So you have to think differently. Yeah. And even after COVID, you know, we put uh, uh, first time we put a this called flash, flash sales. Okay. So you book, we have no consolations. Mm. You book now, you can travel during six months time. The next six time. Months, yeah. So we did it with a uh, with the marketing guys, right, and it worked like you know per day because nobody traveled. Yeah, but they said, "Yeah, these guys are crazy. Mm -hmm. They are putting some packages." So we yeah. put the packages, yeah. and we said, "100 percent, we are re uh, refunding if they can't, uh, they can make it." Right, and we gave them also a choice. Uh, you book uh, this hotel. Mm -hmm. If it is not available, you can uh, shift into other ones. So you have to be very flexible when you are doing yeah. in the market. So I think I picked up a few things from you. What you just said. One number one is that um, having an emotional connection yeah. with whatever you're doing with your customer is yeah, important. important. And number two is that um, being innovative yeah. and coming up with new ideas yeah. and to tackle the problem is yeah. important. And I think the most important thing that you told me just now was the mindset. Yeah. Your mindset when you deal with a yeah. problem, you yeah. can't have a negative mindset. Yeah. That will yeah. be solution. Yeah. yeah, it's always solution driven. Yeah. Every, 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 Every problem will have a solution, so we have to look at, uh, analyze the problem, and yeah. then best get the analyze first the solution. Yes. 
you know problem you know what it you is you know what the problem no problem no point thinking about that thinking about again yeah 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 so think about the solution and then work backwards work backwards yes. right the so one thing that we noticed when we worked with you on multiple occasions is that you are always present always hands on you're always there whether it's you know an early morning start at red amazon yeah. or whether we are planting trees at 12 noon uh, whether it's hot you're there whether it's an event in the yeah. night you're always there you have a big team at your disposal yeah. Yeah. Um, but you still choose to be present yeah. i want to know why you do that and why you think that's important i think tourism is personal touch you can't you can't do tourism with robots and things like that and also i would like to see no not that i trust my team mm. i trust 100% my mm. team. i can't come so long without a good team yeah. but you know the even the clients they love it tourism is a thing that uh, people think uh, if you go to a big uh, company we don't know where we going to end up with and yeah. this especially the kind of tourism which we handle yeah. we need uh, the the maybe owners or the leaders or the ceos mm. to be on touch all the time on the field all the time right. you can't be uh, you know air conditioning office and yeah. uh, how the tree planting no yeah, it's yeah. not yeah. so and also when you go there i think i have very quick solutions whenever yeah. there's a problem you know when they think 10 times i, I said what is that about you uh, and i i get into this uh, mood of solving problems for them so they love it and when i'm here they are also very they are, they take it very easy also yeah. because they know if we have a problem with anything he will back us yeah that is what is what is lacking in the country and especially in management yeah you even they stay of a wrong thing yeah. in tourism yeah. we can't start blagging them or writing memos and things like that yeah. no you first you solve the problem it will cost you any amount right yeah. okay yeah. but you have to solve the problems and make the customers happy yeah that is uh, the way we think all is yeah, yeah. I I remember the tree planting um, there was some problem with the flag and all and then suddenly I saw Chandra walking and saying take this do that do this and then the problem was solved <laughs> so I and I, again an entrepreneur has to be somebody who is focused on solving problems yeah. finding solutions yeah which is how you become a successful entrepreneur all right so my next question is you recently rebranded theme resorts as thema collections yeah. right So some people would wonder why would you do this right now in the middle of a very like turbulent time and, yeah yeah and this is the best opportunity because world tourism trend is change now yeah they are looking for you know new normal way of traveling yeah so i traveled during that time to europe mm-hmm. and uh, so many times and a lot of people uh thing uh, i don't want to go to a big resort i don't take the lift with others this mm. and that still that fear psychosis of pandemic is still yeah. there and also the that two years two years of covid people change the mindset a lot they work from home they want to be at home uh they want to be in open places mm. they don't want to go to cafes we are close so our the properties are very much into that concept mm. we have thought of an all, none of our lobby side air conditioning mm. rooms are air conditioned to sleep yeah. and also we don't have very big uh, towers like yes. thing yeah. and uh, i realized that singal is name sir very catchy yes. when even malu malu aliya kitala mm. all these places went uh, it's, it's like where is very unique like like yeah. like, uh, like more list yes. you know you all the hotels in more list shapes yeah. all are very unique yeah. i'm also a big fan of uh, really trying to um share with the world why what is unique about sri lanka our language our yeah, culture uh, you so i tema yeah. and uh, yeah. uh, you know you, it's it, all what makes it interesting, interesting right interesting yeah you have to try to be like another another destination destination so authenticity is very very important a lot of people come here but i'm very worried about sri lanka authenticity and biodiversity we we destroy our forest we we kill our elephant how the big conglomerates manage the environment with the development yeah. if you see the how many millions of the silly silly bags mm. are put to the nature by the big supermarket chains mm. then the beverages companies you yeah. go and see any drain yeah. how many have been blocked by this uh, bags and plastic bottles and uh, visual pollutions mm. telephone towers mm. uh, any go candy mm. you can see a huge tower mm. at upset the whole view of uh, kadugan now yeah. likewise even the hoardings mm. lot of visual pollution is happening and uh, that 
natural uh, beauty. beauty of the shops. All the shops are painted mm. a international brand because yeah. they pay for it. It's all yeah. money, but they actually government. Uh, that's these are the challenges. I'm yes. talking about the challenges. Yeah. So, so the, the, this is a big challenge for the destination. Mm. Yeah, we, are, we are using, we are losing mm. our authenticity. Yes, I agree, and that is the reason why people come here. And that's I mean, what we should protect. Protect. That's a, that's a, you are there. Yeah, it's, it's, so in the current situation in Sri Lanka, what we are going through right now as a country, economically, yeah. we can see a variety of people in uh, different age groups yeah. choosing to either leave Sri Lanka uh, or to not invest in the tourism industry. Yeah. As somebody who has been through multiple turbulent times yeah. over your long uh, yeah. journey in the industry, what kind of advice would you give to people who want to leave right now, especially the young people? Well, what I always say like uh, this, if you are young people, uh, if they are doing a like, normal job here, like room boy, waiters, go yeah. and gain the experience. experience, money, come back after two years. Until that, we have to wait on. Yeah. This, we can't stop them like, okay, yeah. and this is the only hotel industry and the tourism industry is the only industry where our government doesn't spend more on the education. If you if you lose a doctor or engineer or accountant, mm. they are going to universities and it is all public tax money. Yeah. So these people will not come back. And yeah. and our this uh, especially industry guys when they go, they send their money back to the country. So it's very important. Mm. But uh, selling all the properties mm. and going and uh, for me no, yeah. I have a second country, mm. but uh, my country is here. Yeah. So that's that's I think even the investment you have to watch, mm. and not to over invest. And uh, uh, you know, it happened in Thailand. Yeah. Thailand way worse than us, but yeah. th they, but they got a lot of uh, IMF help them out, yeah. and they built the tourism with that. Yeah. And the, that was the quickest recovery to Thailand was comeback of uh, tourists. That is recently. Not recently, nineteen. 80s or beginning 79 or something. Oh, like. really? So they over invested yeah. during that time? No, no, at that time they didn't always invest, but they had a sort of bot, mm. had collapsed, mm. uh, tourism, Thailand economy collapsed, mm. tourism collapsed, everything. So, but they build it back, yeah. the economy based a lot on tourism, Thai Airways and mm. this and that. So, uh, it's because it's tourism fee, we don't need another big investment with yeah. this, what we have, yeah. we can reach about 4 million tourists. Yeah. As it, so, if you get four million, you will get about you know eight billion dollars, yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's not that difficult. The only thing what we need is this time of this to keep airlines coming, mm. manage the travel advisories, mm. and uh, proper marketing. Proper marketing. Yeah. Marketing is being done yeah. in Sri Lanka because when you say Sri Lanka, name Sri Lanka itself has, uh, has some. It's like a, another brand like thing, you know, yeah. it's not like you know, India or Pakistan, no. But Sri Lanka has oh, nice name and mm. meaning of Sri Lanka and all those things. Yeah. The, the, that, that, that itself a brand. So mm. this is the time, I think, uh, for the young people, what I said, all this is a good time to study. Mm. And uh, try by the environment, you try by the sort of mm. uh, organic uh, uh, agriculture, yes. this type of thing. I mean, we want to bring even organic agriculture into hotel school. Even the managers, we tell them now oh, in our hotel, when they're free time, they all all are there uh -huh. <laughs> working in the paddy, the paddy fields and uh, all other sort of uh, vegetables, uh, yeah, pots uh, and all those things. So this is very important for them to know mm. and understand. Yeah. Uh, leave the country for yeah, I th because if one of my chef now I know my chef is going, yeah, uh, but he, he might, if he goes to Middle East, only will come back. Mm. I am scared when he go to Australia. He will never come back. He will never come back. Yeah. He will settle down. He will never send a dollar here. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So this this is why Australia or New Zealand or this piece yeah. papers they are they, they're moving. Yeah. And this is specifically you are talking the hotel industry. Hotel stuff. industry yeah. stuff. And, uh, I also agree with you because I think if there is a con there is a difficult time, you have a family to take care of. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, sure. we can't take care yeah. of them. Yeah. So we have limited uh, resources. Yes. We don't. I don't think that uh, it will come back. I think somebody. Yeah. Back, I think. But you would definitely tell them to br bring that expertise and Expert. experience yeah, when they go back to, into Yeah, when you go and work in maybe Dubai or Qatar and all, their yeah. salads are very high, yeah. set by British and yeah. Americans. So yeah. 
so you can see the hygiene and how they move and yeah. uh, uh, they talk mannerism. Yeah, yeah. They learn a lot of mannerism yeah. in those countries. Yeah. How to treat women and right. it, especially yeah. this is very important. How exposure to, is always exposure is good always good industry. in this industry. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know, I always think like today, room boy, he can't be room uncle. Yeah. He can't work. Yeah, like, yeah. He has to so progress. He has to progress. Yeah. Either he has to be a supervisor within two years. Mm. They can learn on the job. Yeah. They learn on the job. Yeah. And uh, if you're going to be a steward, some people like like I know some concierge, mm. uh, the bell boys, they don't they don't want to change because of tips and things ah, like that, okay. right? But uh, but I see is uh, this, if he's a very career oriented person, I push them around. Yeah. This there are two or three boys. They came as ah, I go to Dubai. It's very good. Mm. Rukata, because I know that they come back. I, yeah. I, uh, Ninety percent of people who left our uh, have, come back. have come back and working here now. Maybe when they come back, they are a, they, they work as supervisor yeah. or a captain. No, yeah. so that's good for them. They, they and also they when they come back, they have money to build the house, mm. which is most important thing. Yeah. You know? cool. But you know, a lot of people are grumbling now. All our staff are going. What to do? So yeah. it has been happening for the last thirty years. Yeah. I noticed that a lot of the hotels uh, have understood this. They know it. They know it's not a problem they can solve. So what they are doing is, and I'm sure you're also doing this, training, taking in new staff, yeah. taking on the burden of training, training, yeah. and knowing that you might lose them. Yeah. Oh, but only the biggest problem for me is to train a chef. Mm. Yeah. It's hard. All other housekeeping, front office, and all other departments, engineering, and things like that. It's not difficult for me. Is the cookery? Yeah, that's the heart of the hotel. Heart the of the hotel, uh, food, uh, food department is that. Feel, that that is very uh, interesting to see how now we have to deviate. We can't uh, we can't do restaurants with uh, silver service and all this. We might know how, but I have noticed it, people prefer to come and eat on a banana leaf yeah. and pay thirty five dollars than giving. Uh, Silver service, but they have it there. Yeah, most of the Europeans. And that's that. Coming back to that thing of authentic, we should uh, uh, embody what we have here because they are coming from a country where they have the best fine yeah. dining and all yeah. of that. Usually, yeah. So they are coming for something yeah. different, and we yeah. have that different. Yeah. yeah, and also now, if you say this one is a paddy museum. Yeah. This is a rice and curry restaurant. Yeah. And we sell it uh, for about thirty-five to forty dollars yeah. per person. Mm. Right, it's maybe uh, I mean it's much ha expensive than even eating in the restaurant there. But they prefer to. They eat. prefer come here very open, AC, yeah. no ACs, yeah. and they also we can educate themselves how we did the paddy culture. Mm. So that this, the dining in museums yeah. in France is a huge thing. A huge thing. Right. And uh, you got palaces and they go to castles and things like that. So we don't have that type of things. Yeah. We create things like that. Which is very interesting and it's very educative how we the different type of uh, rice, rice and paddy. Right. One thing I just want to talk to you about one last thing is that when I no I notice when you talk about your staff, especially the young one, yeah. that it seems like you have a very good relationship with them. That like they can come to you with anything if they have a yeah. problem or that maybe um, that you're advising them on how they can improve. I've been to now a, a number of your properties and uh, I've been worked with your managers and your yeah. staff and one thing I can tell you is that your staff really admire you and love you which is a very good sign for me always when the staff uh, love yeah. the company and of course they are very yeah. fond of you as well they always talk very nicely about you it, it shows me that uh, you take care of them and they feel safe and um, taken care of in your company, which is always yeah. a great thing because they return that favor to you by taking yeah. wonderful care of this uh, yeah, yeah. customers, the clients. Yeah, that's normal because we are, our business is with people. Yes. If you don't have the correct people to man, the business you're out. Correct. Okay, that yeah. is all thank of our you. questions thank for you. Mr. Chandra. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for sharing your yeah. insight with us. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. I hope. It's a good conversation. Yes, it is great. <laughs> I love listening to you. You can uh, right. talk even longer, but I think it uh, let no. you go very uh, <laughs> right. uh, right. day to day. Yeah, yeah. All All right. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shan.